Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTM Sports Gaming. This particular topic, Filip Herkovic, has been one that has been on our channel over and over and over again, which leads me to believe that it's something that you all want me to talk about. So let's get into it. Let's talk about Filip Herkovic. First of all, I will say, before we talk about Philip Herkovich, I want to talk about a man that doesn't get enough credit, who was also from Croatia, called Zelko Mavrovic. Zelko Mavrovic fought Lennox Lewis over 12, round, over 12 rounds, gave Lennox Lewis one of the hardest fights of his career, backed him up, hurt him, and uh, showed a tremendous chin, punching power, boxing ability, heart, determination. And if he was in this era, Zelka Mavrovic would have been heavyweight champion of the world. If people are talking about Otto Volin and rating him up, Zelka Mavrovic would have been heavyweight champion of the world. So there we go. A lot, I don't hear a lot of people talk about Zelka Mavrovic. And at one point, I am going to do a video dedicated to Zelka Mavrovic because he doesn't get the credit he deserves being the fight he was. And he gave Lennox Lewis all he, he could want in that fight. Lennox and his overconfidence went into the Zelka Mavrovic fight thinking that he was going to steamroll Zelka Mavrovic. But Zelka Mavrovic, through good combinations, worked body and head well. And uh, yeah, he did. He did really well against Lennox Lewis. So I want to give that shout out to Zelka Mavrovic, the Croatian connection, and leave it there with that. Which leads me on to Filip Herkovic. One of the reasons why I haven't really looked at Herkovic, and I'm being honest with you, is because Zelka Mavr uh, uh, Filip Herkovic hasn't done anything yet. He hasn't fought anybody yet to say, "Oh wow, he's great." However. That doesn't mean he isn't going to be great or that doesn't mean he hasn't got the ability to be great. So let's look at uh, Philip Herkovich a little bit more. Let's let's wind the clock back a bit. OK, so. We know he had a stellar amateur career. Career started in 2000, 2017, 2019 or 2017. We started his career alias Stone Man. Well, I called him there. Croatian sensation. He's from Croatia. He debuted his career on in September the 30th, 2017. He's orthodox. He's a heavyweight. He's six foot six. He's from Zagreb, Croatia. I think he's actually from the same place as Zelko Mavrovic. And if you look on the record, he's fought Zambano, Tom Little, Sean Turner, Amir, Amir Mansour, Kevin Johnson, Eric Molina, Gregory Corbin. So and he has fought a couple of guys. Pavel Saul was 6-0. and um, Filberto Tovar was 9-0, unbeaten fighters. And he hasn't fought anybody whose record has got, apart from Rafael Zambano, who had 39 wins and uh, 15 losses. Other than that, you know, the w next person who had the worst record after that was Kevin Johnson with 33 fights and 11 losses. Um, and then now he was meant the last fight he's going to have was against Jerry Forrest. I believe that's who now Big Baby Miller's going to be fighting, if I'm correct. He fought Eric Molina. Um, and I know Eric Molina can punch, but Eric Molina can also, he, he, he knows how to fight a canvas very quickly when he doesn't really want to be in the ring. And there's one that there's two Eric Molinas. There's Eric Molina who gets onto the front foot and throw, throw, goes to the front foot and throws punches. And you get Eric Molina who sits on the back foot, walks towards the back, walks to the ropes and gets knocked over. Um, I said this when he fought Wilder, he was on the front foot. When he fought Joshua, he was on the back foot. I said within 30 seconds, we're going to know if Eric Molina has come to fight against Joshua. Within 30 seconds, his back foot was touching the ropes and the rest is history. So in terms of resistance, because you Amir Mansour, I mean, Amir Mansour, 40 plus, 43, 44, whatever. Uh, Sean Turner and Tom Little, okay, fine, fair enough. I didn't blast them out in a round or two. In fact, uh, he went to point to Sean Turner and with Tom Little, 
it was a few rounds before he knocked Tom, Tom Little out or stopped him. Kevin Johnson fight again, he's gone to points. Now, bear in mind, Kevin Johnson got stopped by Martin Bacole in within five rounds. This guy went to points with him. So just some, some things there. He's rated four star by BoxRec. He's ranked number one in Croatia. Well, that's not going to be very difficult. I don't think Croatia produces that many good heavyweights. But in the world, he's ranked 21 at 1,324. Okay. So I, I do try to say this. He has got a uh, great pedigree uh, as an amateur, Herkovic. So that helps. So you can see automatically, unlike Gerard Anderson we saw earlier, we can see automatically the class of the man, the way he stands. He's got a very good left jab, uses his jab to set up his right hand, understands distance and timing. Um, and he does throw it. He don't, he, the minute I saw him, the first minute I looked at this guy, I thought Vitaly Klitschko, same sort of stiff upper body, left jab, right hand, very mechanical jab, left left jab goes out, right hand down the pipe, very accurate his punches. His right hand is, is uh, obviously his honey punch. He does have a sneaky little left hook he throws from him so often, but for the most part, it's left jab, right hand. Not too much body punching. Uh, not too much uh, uh, uppercuts, but his main punch is his left jab, his right hand and distance. Very much out of the Klitschko style of boxing, which means it's less likely for you to get countered because you're not throwing four or five punches. You're throwing one, two punches. Get in, get out. Good footwork to get out the way. Get in and get out and throw punches. So he has got his, his offense well and he's got his defense well because he's not engaging to point to get counter punch one two and i'm out of there you know if i'm gonna throw another one two i'm making sure that i've got my distance right so the whole reach of my arm so he's letting you throw the whole reach of his jab the whole reach of his arm and the right hand the whole reach of that right hand he's not staying close and allowing himself to get hit with with silly punches so defensively responsible uh knows when to throw his punches and where to place his punches accurate with his punches wouldn't call him the fastest of punches. Um, but yeah, he's got the package there. He looks the goods. Now, those are all the things he looks good on. Now, never been dropped in all his amateur career. I don't care about all that. I'm not interested in that nonsense. I, he's never been dropped. He's never been stopped. Well, listen, there are many guys who have never been dropped. And then when they do get dropped, they don't get up. Uh, so I'm not interested in getting dropped and stopped and all this nonsense. Not interested in all that. So he hasn't fought anyone with a losing record. Hmm. Yeah, all this stuff sounds great. Now, I am conscious that people are very biased on here. Some people can be biased because of colour. I'm not into all that stuff. I'm not into because he's black is this and because he's white is that. I'm looking at the boxing ability. So what a person does if you're going to say it for one person please say it for somebody else has Gerard Anderson been dropped as an amateur well if he ain't had no amateur fights he hasn't been dropped as an amateur so what's it between him and Herkovich Herkovich fought in the amateurs Gerard Anderson didn't drop it uh, didn't get dropped in amateurs I didn't get dropped in the amateur but that don't mean anything it doesn't it doesn't correlate because you haven't been dropped it doesn't mean you can't be dropped or it hasn't happened okay it can happen. Some of his fighters have been dropped and stopped. So I don't want to hear he hasn't stopped. He hasn't been stopped. He hasn't been dropped. Because that, that to me, doesn't mean anything. Yes, he's a very good boxer. But here's the downside of what I've seen. Of I've given you all the things that I think are very good about Herkovich. Here, those are the pros. Here are the cons about um, Herkovich. And there are quite a few of them. If you go through Herkovich's career and you go for it and watch it on YouTube, you will see the same thing over and over and over and over again. Guys who are limited foot movement move straight back and move in straight lines and very slow, ponderous. You know, they don't they don't offer much resistance. And even when they do offer resistance, Herkovic, they don't have the ability to close the range on Herkovic and do consistent work. 
Perkovic has always been the guy who's in control of the fight. He's always in control of the left jab and a right hand and keep him at distance. Herkovich looks very good because he's fighting nobody who's giving him any form of resistance. And even the people that do kind of give him a little bit of resistance, he's able to step back, use the jab and throw the right hand in. So for that, Herkovich looks great. But all of Herkovich's fights look the same way. Same guy, hands up, move forward, straight lines, and worried about getting hit back. None of the guys that Herkovich has fought so far has had any dog in them. No, the guys that Herkovich has fought, they has fought so far are good on the inside. None of them, not one. Here we go. That's thirty percent heavyweight star. You're always going to excuse when it comes to the guy that you like, but okay. I said he's very Vitaly Klitschko like. He doesn't understand lateral movement. Herkovich comes forward in straight lines and moves back in straight lines. He doesn't give you any side-to-side -side movement. He's very plodding and he's very one-paced. Herkovich doesn't have another gear from what I've seen so far. He throws the same punches over and over and over. Same punches. Same punches. So that's something. Yeah, I don't want to hear anything about no three-round fights or four-round fights in the amateurs. He's in the professional ranks now. I'm not interested in the amateurs. I can look at guys. I can look at Tyrell Biggs in the amateurs. I can look at Henry Tillman in the amateurs. In the amateurs, Henry Tillman beat Mike Tyson. In the pros, Mike Tyson knocked at Henry Tillman in a round. Don't talk to me about what the amateurs and the pros. We're talking the pro game now. If you want to talk about the amateurs, stay in the amateurs. We're in the pros now, and we're talking about the pro game, please. So stay in the pro game. And go in the amateurs and fantasize in the amateurs, then fine. I've never done a world heavyweight champion. Uh, win the WBC heavyweight championship of the world as an amateur, all right? So let's stay pro. I'm telling you what I've seen as a pro. And the guys he fought so far, with all due respect, have been walking punching bags. He hasn't fought anybody who has given him any head movement. Semi-pro. Okay. Somebody says he's semi-pro. Do you, know, do you know why it's called semi-pro? Semi-pro. There's the hint. Semi. Uh, I've never known of the WBC semi-pro ch heavyweight champion of the world. I've never heard of a semi-pro. Uh, Tyson Fury is not semi-pro. Dilly White's not semi-pro. Anthony Josh is not semi-pro. Alexander Povek is not semi-pro. Vitaly and Vladimir Klitschko are not semi-pro. So please, stop it. Stop it. Stop making excuses. Stop it. Behave yourselves, right? This guy is a professional fighter. I'm making an assessment based on heavyweight fighters. Those are rare in heavyweights, though. What? Semi-pro heavyweights. Okay. I don't hear this nonsense about Alexander Usyk, who's undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Okay? So I don't want to hear no more nonsense. If you want to talk heavyweight boxing, we talk heavyweight boxing. Professional heavyweight boxing. OK, I, I do hear the favoritism in some of you people here. That's fine. And that's why when you go to bet on your fighters and then they're getting blown out and knocked out, you can't accept it because you've got delusional ideas of these fighters. All right. Rare to have heavyweights with good movement. No, uh, heavyweights have got good movement would generally be guys who are guys who are who are shorter. Mike Tyson. Uh, that sort of style, who have got to get in and throw punches. So here we go. So it's not it's not rare in the heavyweight division. It's just not taught. It doesn't make it rare. It's just not taught. Or there's not many of those guys around at the moment. A lot of these guys are beast, big, stiff guys like Herkovich. Herkovich, for me, is talented. But he's not the greatest heavyweight at all. No chance. You look at Tyson Fury, he's six foot nine, and Tyson Fury has got as far more diverse than Herkovich. Tyson Fury can box orthodox and southpaw. Tyson Fury's got better footwork than Herkovich. Tyson Fury can punch it from angles and move from angles. A Tyson Fury didn't work in boxing a world boxing super series, well, a, a world uh, uh, a boxing series. He didn't do that. All right, did Tyson Fury didn't do that. And he can box Orthodox and Southpaw. Okay. Herkovich is yet to fight somebody 
who's a pressure fighter, a guy that knows how to slip the jab and get inside. He's yet to fight that. He's fought guys who stay on the outside of the jab and don't know how to get past the jab. So for this minute in time, Herkovich has looked good. For me, I haven't seen Herkovich's inside game. Meaning, what happens when somebody gets past his jab? We saw Corbin try to get past the jab on Herkovich, and Herkovich showed a short right hand to catch Corbin. But again, Corbin wasn't ex- wasn't didn't know how to come on the inside. He he got on the inside. He left his 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 his, his uh, head exposed and got knocked out. So this is what I'm talking about, guys who don't know how to close the range on Herkovic. Herkovic, you look at all of these fights. He's on the front foot. Going forward, throwing punches, knocking other guys over. That's fine. But you will not, I repeat, you will not continue going for the heavyweight division doing that. Eventually, you're going to meet a guy who can throw a nice uppercut on the inside. Eventually, you're going to fight a guy. And Herkovich has already fought guys that he's not knocked out. Okay? He's gone to points. So, that tells you already that Herkovic isn't a Deontay Wilder in terms of punching power. Okay? He's gone the distance with Kevin Johnson, all right? A guy that Martin Bacoli knocked out. So just put things into perspective here. Herkovich hasn't knocked everybody out his fault, all right? He's 10-0, and 0, but he hasn't knocked everybody out, all right? In fact, Herkovich has had one, two unanimous points decisions, right? He had a unanimous points decision over Kevin Johnson and a unanimous decision over Sean Turner. Okay, that's what's happened. That's the facts. That's not me. That's not me uh, saying it because I hate Herkovic. That's a fact. Those are some guys, two guys, who've got a point of Herkovic, which means simply that Herkovic isn't the biggest puncher in the world, although you might like to think that. So we know now already people look at and think, okay. He doesn't punch as hard as some fantasists would like to believe. He does punch relatively hard, but most heavyweights do. Again, and I don't know what he's like when somebody gets inside. When somebody gets past Herkovich jab and gets inside and goes to work, what happens? Now, that might be difficult because Herkovich does have a very good jab. But he's very, he's a upright, stiff, upright. So anybody who's got any sort of movement about them is going to give Herkovich problems, okay? What does Herkovic do when it gets put on him, when his back is against the ropes, when he's getting whacked to the body and getting hit with uppercuts, when somebody's walking through his punches and throwing punches back at him? These are all questions that Herkovich hasn't answered yet. So before I can say Herkovic is the next heavyweight champion of the world, he has to go through that test, I, which I explained to you before in uh, the MOT of boxing. Go back and look at my video on the MOT of boxing. Herkovich has not passed the MOT of boxing. Uh, amateur boxing does not mean you pass the, the MOT of boxing professional boxing. Yes, he's a good quality boxer. No, I don't know if he's got heart. No, I don't know what his chin is really like. No, I don't know if he can fight on the inside. No, I don't know what he how he responds when somebody is taking his best punches and coming back and throwing punches back at him. I don't know those things. So I don't know how good Herkovich is. What I do know is if you stand in front of Herkovich, allow him to use the jab and the right hand, he's going to either knock you out or he's going to outpoint you. That's what I do know. And that's all I know about Herkovich as a professional fighter in 10 fights. And that's all I can. That's all I, and I know he's at a certain level. I know he's 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 better than the likes of Tom Little, Kevin Johnson, a faded Kevin Johnson, and and uh, and Sean Turner. I know he's better than uh, Amir Mansour, a faded Amir Mansour. Right? I know that much. I know that he's better than Eric Molina, who didn't come to, who didn't want to come and fight. I know that much. That much I know because his record tells me so. But I don't know. I don't know. See, I would like to see Herkovic fight Joe Joyce. That would be a great fight. Why? Because Joe Joyce has equally got a decent jab. He's equally as slow as Herkovic, right? And 
Joyce is a, can fight on the inside. Joyce can push you back with his jab, force you onto the back foot, walk for your punches, and then start landing big punch of his own. I would stick Joyce Joyce in with Herkovich tomorrow and won't think twice about it. And I'll say to Joyce, you know what? Force this guy into the back foot. Force him into the back foot. Make him fight or get off against his ropes and keep him on those ropes and throw them big punches that you like to throw on the ropes. Because I know Joyce has got an engine. So Joe Joyce would be a great fight. You know, so that's a good fight. I don't know how you can say a guy looks and an eye test. Uh, he looks fringe world level. How uh, Your eyes need testing, son. How can a guy look fringe world level when he ain't fought no one anywhere near world level? I mean, I don't understand how you can call a guy fringe world level, Ruben. I don't understand it. How can you call a guy fringe world level when he hasn't even fought anybody near the world level? It, who has he fought in the top 20? Who has Herkovich fought in the top 20? Right? Who has he fought? i tell you someone now who definitely beat Herkovich. Michael Hunt will beat Herkovich. Michael Hunt will beat Herkovich because Herkovich is too stiff. He's too straight up. And Michael Hunt is going to move him around the ring. Any guy who's got footwork and can manoeuvre Herkovich around the ring, Herkovich needs to stand there. He needs to put that jab on you to land that right hand. So I suspect Herkovich uses that jab as a rain finder. But if you're not there, Herkovich, Herkovich, Herkovich will not beat Michael Hunter. Herkovich can't beat Michael Hunter. That's where it is right now. He cannot beat Michael Hunter. He cannot beat Michael Hunter. No, cannot beat Michael Hunter. Michael Hunter will Michael Hunter will eat Herkovich up and spit him out. Herkovich has got a good jab and a good right hand, yes, against guys that stand right in front of him. But Michael Hunter won't stand in front of Herkovich. He'll move from side to side. He'll eat up Herkovich. He'll work Her Herkovich's body. He'll shot. He'll get inside and rub Herkovich up on the inside. Do you understand? I just heard Gavich fight against a guy who stands similar height to him, who could throw the jab as good as him. I think it's a good fight. I think Herkovich versus Huey Fury is a good fight. Who has pushed, who's pushed Herkovich back? I've never seen anyone push Herkovich back. It can't be done. Oh, it can be done. It can be done. You know, so I, I, um, for me, he's got the, he's got the, the outside of the car looks great. The outside of the Ferrari looks great. Um, but I need to know the internals about Herkovic. And until he fights somebody, Herkovic is not a 40 year old. Uh, okay, let's go back to Michael Hunter. Let's, let's talk about Michael Hunter a second, just for a second, uh, Ruben, just to remind you, because I know you're a bit biased. Let's go back to Michael Hunter's career. And one of the guys you, one of your fighters that you were backing and rating so much was Kuzmin. Remember Kuzmin? You were rating Kuzmin? Let, let's go back. You were rating Kuzmin. Remember you were rating Kuzmin? Let's bring him up. Wow. Okay, Michael Hunter. Yeah, he fought Kuzman. Remember Kuzman? A unanimous decision, Kuzman. Okay, stopped Ustinov. Stopped Bacoli. These are all big guys. Big guys that basically. Cannot move out of the way. Kuzmin, yeah. Kuzmin was a guy you were rating very highly. And you thought that Kuzmin would beat Hunter. And Ku Hunter made mockery of, Hunt uh, of, of Kuzmin. So, those guys, these guys like this, who fight like Herkovich, 
They are good on the front foot, jab, right hand. You can go through the history of boxing of guys who look good, that are good on the jab and the right hand. But when you start putting pressure on them, it's another matter altogether. Vitaly Klitschko was doing great. But look what happened when he met Chris Bird. Look at, go look at Vitaly Klitschko against Chris Bird. And, and that's the sort of guy that's going to give Herkovich problems. Guy who's got lateral movement, who can move around the ring and doesn't have to stand in front of Herkovich. I want to see against Herkovich against a guy that's got lateral movement and knows how to box. And is not coming there for a payday or come there to be a patsy, meaning to make Herkovich look good. And all the guys he's fought so far are to make Herkovich look good. So I'm sorry, at this point in time, Herkovich is still um, a prospect. A prospect moving into contender position. But he has to fight somebody. He needs to fight someone in the top 15 now, for me. He has to fight someone in the top 15 who's a name, who's not a patsy, who's come to fight. So here's some guys. Let's look at the heavyweight division at the moment. I would not stick him in with any heavy, any any of the top heavyweights at the see now. Uh, let's see here. Um, a guy that uh, Herkovich, you want to see how good Herkovich is? Stick him in against Andy Ruiz. That's a good fight. Andy Ruiz is a good fight for Herkovich. Uh, Luis Ortiz is a good fight for Herkovich. Joseph Parker is a good fight for Herkovich. Kubrat Pulev is a good fight for Herkovich. Usyk will make will make Herkovich throw up. Usyk's footwork and movement, he's not going to stick around for Herkovich. Michael Hunt and another, not going to stick around for Herkovich. Robert Helenius is similar to Herkovich with that jab and right hand. That's a good fight. Charles Martin, I'd like to see Charles Martin and Herkovich fight. Derek Chisora and Herkovich, good fight. I'd like to see whether Chisora can close the range, get inside and throw his punches. Good fight. So Herkovich is dead at 16. Joyce is at 17. Dubois is at 18. Karanaki, you know what I think of him? A Jagba, no, I, I think Herkovich could beat a Jagba. Uh, Dominic Brazil, yeah, that's another guy that I think Herkovich would beat. Stand up straight, straight up. Caballel's another. Otto Volin. Otto Volin's a good fight. Um, fast hands. Um, but I think Herkovich could control him with the jab and use the right hand. Joe Washington and Herkovich should knock him out. Uh, Huey Fury, good fight. Good fight. Hugh's got to be on his P and Q's with that one. He's got to use the jab. He's got to box Herkovich, beat him to the jab and push him backwards. He's got to be aggressive in that fight, Huey. Martin Bacoli, a good fight for Herkovich. Tony Yoka, I think Yoka can beat Herkovich. Junior Farr, good fight for Herkovich. Simon Keane, don't know anything much about him. But there we go, that's it. So those are guys who I think would give Herkovich a good fight. So, uh, he... So there we go. That, that's where we're at now with things with Herkovich. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's got his skilled heavyweight. But how skilled he is, he needs some resistance to find out how skilled he is. So at this minute in time, has he got the skills to become heavyweight champion of the world? I don't know. He's a bit one-paced. Is that pace enough to become heavyweight champion of the world? It certainly isn't enough to beat Tyson Fury. Um, I don't know. I think Wilder's too dynamic for him. Too, too, too dynamic. Too explosive. Punches too far, too hard, too fast. And uh, I'd like to see Herkovich and Dillian White. Because they've got Dillian White who knows how to fight on the inside. So if Dillian White's going to win that fight, he'll have to win it from the inside, forcing Herkovich back. Herkovich and Joseph Parker, 
That's a fight I'd like to see because Parker can move. He's got movement. He's got footwork. You understand? You know, he's not going to stand in front of Herkovich. That's a good testing fight for Herkovich. Uh, Parker and Ruiz. Those are two fights I'd like to see Perkovich in. And for a boxing fight match, I'd like to see him and Ruiz fight. And Hellenius is good. People are like, knock at Hellenius. Didn't Hellenius just knock at your boy the other day? Didn't Hellenius knock at your boy the other day, Ruben? So he beats everyone outside the top 10 comfortably, Ruben says. I uh, don't agree with you, mate. Sorry, I can't agree with that one. Hergovich is good, but let's see what he does when he fights somebody puts pressure on him. Until then, I think it's all speculation. He looks good against punching bags, and that is quite what he's been facing. All he's made to make him look like punching bags. Flat-footed, come-forward guys with not real many ambitions to win. He's fought a whole load of guys that have made him look good, and that is that on Herkovich. We'll see where this ends up um, in fights. When he when he fights somebody that I think is going to give him a good look, I'll do a, I'll do a, a preview of to that fight. Until then, those are my thoughts on Philip Herkovich. And if you're not sure, you can always watch the replay of it. It might know what people want to hear, but like I said, until Herkovich fights somebody that has a pulse, uh. A pulse meaning that really wants to come in there and rip his head off, and nobody's fought him like that so far, and has got a punching power to do it, to do damage. <sighs> okay, so there we go. Um, I've got to continue my football manager 2020 today. Football manager touch. I've got a Luton Town I'm working with at the moment, so I might work with that later. Do a bit of that later. Right, I think I'm going to go and do Abdusalamov. I think it's Abdusalamov his name is? No. Uh, Ar Arslanbek. I might look at him as well. But yeah. Uh, I'll see you soon. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Might not be what you want to hear, but I just try and tell you my truth.